and ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of World Talks here on TVP World, where every word matters. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and please join me and my guests on this next interview. Germany and France are pushing for a Europe-wide deal on migration with the UK, citing the adverse impact of Brexit on asylum and migration policies. In a joint letter, they emphasize the need for a coordinated approach to manage irregular flows and the risk involved in channel crossings. The move coincides with Labour's renewed diplomatic outreach to the EU, potentially paving the way for new agreements. However, the negotiations could be complicated by demands for post-Brexit concessions on youth mobility and refugee settlement. Joining us today on TVP World to discuss this is John Del Hussein, Senior Fellow at the European Stability Initiative. Hello, sir, and welcome to TVP World. Good morning. So first of all, can you help us understand the timing? Can you elaborate why Germany and France are pushing for this migration deal with the UK now? Does it have anything to do with the new government being voted in? I certainly, I think the the new government being there is is the, the 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 thing that has opened up the possibility of of such a deal being made. And France and Germany both have their interests in in controlling irregular migration, uh, sounding like they're offering solutions on these. They've had these for some time. It's been very difficult for any progress to be made on these issues, uh, despite you know, great interest from the UK under the the, the concern. Conservatives, the, the, the post Brexit, the Brexit generating government. Obviously, there's a sense that this has changed now with Labour and, and Starmer in power. He's just done his, his European tour. He was in Paris and he was in Berlin recently. He's clearly signaled that um, cooperation on, on controlling my irregular migration across the Channel is a priority for him. So, France and Germany see an opportunity here perhaps to, to offer. It's the cooperation that he really needs on this, but to extract some other things that they're also interested in, which extend uh, beyond controlling irregular migration to, as you just pointed out, uh, legal mobility, so regular migration, easier migration, uh, particularly for, for youth mobility, but perhaps also other EU citizens into the UK. Right, you mentioned there's difficulty in the process, even though there is mutual interest. So what's stopping them from coming to the table and striking up a deal if it is in both uh, EU and UK's interest to well, limit the migration from some third world countries to well, enhance mobility of the youth? Well, there, there is a very strong shared interest in controlling, indeed, eliminating irregular uh, migration across the channel. And, and this is indeed possible, and it will only be possible through a, a cooperation, a return agreement, essentially, between the UK and, and the EU. Uh, it's the only thing that will control it. Um, the difficulty until now is that the focus has been exclusively on, on security cooperation. This won't offer uh, that level of control. Um, but there are complications. Uh, the what is it the, the quid pro quo so for for the UK under the previous government there's always been an absolute refusal to see any kind of, of increased mobility in the other direction either for asylum seekers being able to, to travel regularly to the UK, some kind of quota for asylum seekers to compensate for the fact that none are arriving regularly. And now, indeed, France and Germany also suggesting that other forms of legal mobility, so increased uh, migration of EU citizens to the UK, should also be on the table. And these are, are currently difficult conditions for Labour to accept, uh, and they've suggested that they are resistant to them. but but. Some combination of these conditions are likely to be necessary if the UK wants to secure the kind of cooperation that will end this perpetual political headache, once for the Tories, now very much for Labour. Right. You mentioned this uh, position, well, puts uh, the Labour in a difficult position for them to accept some of these terms. But when it comes to the uh, mobility of the youth, when it comes to legal migration, where's the difficulty in that? Uh, sorry, I, I, I missed a little the first question. If you could repeat it, please. All right. You, you mentioned that. Please. Uh, My apologies. <laughs> no problem. You mentioned that there's uh, difficulty when it comes to well, 
uh, the, it's putting labor in a difficult position to pass some mm -hmm. of these, uh, well, increase these mobility and for the moving of these migrants. Where is the difficulty stemming from? What's, what's running counter to the UK's interest? Well, I mean, there's a difference between what's objectively not in the, the UK's interest and, and how a public uh, political climate is on this, what public opinion seems to think about, about, about uh, increased migration. Uh, obviously, controlling migration was a, a strong driver of Brexit, reducing uh, the, the free movement of EU citizens into the UK was a, a strong motivation behind it. Uh, so, so new deals that seem to, to reopen that possibility of are, are, are difficult, and they're also difficult for, for Labour, despite its more relaxed views on, on mobility generally and, and EU relations uh, in, in particular. So I think this is ultimately the, the the stumbling block, a public opinion that's very wary of, of increased migration and and, and that has received, nonetheless, as you pointed out, post-Brexit, much more net migration to the UK uh, than it had before Brexit. Uh, so, so therein lies the the anxiety for for labour. But but as I said, if it wants a deal that will end channel crossings and none of its current policies will deliver it, it will in the end have to agree to some kind of uh, uh, deal with the EU, with France and Germany. That includes some of these components. The precise question now is about the timing and which uh, mobility pack package, which mobility components it includes, and how many. And how coherent and unified is France and Germany coming into this negotiation? We're seeing recently some different national perspectives on immigration and migration, even within France and Germany, with Germany recently closing its border and France, well, both countries kind of voting in politicians that are more in the anti-immigration policy. For them to now uh, talk to UK about migration while they're still trying to figure out themselves, do you think that kind of weakens the unity of the message? Uh, I, I, I'm not so sure. I mean, they, they might be both going about their migration uh, challenges in, in different ways and not always in, in, in hugely compatible ways. But the, the overarching interest of both of them is very much the same. Both of them have a very strong interest in demonstrating they are collaborating and the EU as a whole is capable of, of delivering irregular migration control policies. One border on which it can do this is its border with the, with the UK. And it should be looking at what policies along this border, along this external border where, where there's outward uh, irregular migration, can, can we develop that we can use to inspire policies on our southern and eastern borders where we're experiencing inward irregular migration. Right, but the UK government has been resistant to an EU-wide migration deal in the past. So do you see any indications that this position might change under the current government? Well, the, the current government has substituted one slogan, Sunak's stop the boat, uh, with another, uh, smash the gangs. Labour has, has been equally clear about its commitment to ending what Starmer describes as a, as a vile trade in, 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 in people. So the, the commitment is the same. The concern is the same. Uh, the UK public really wants to see control. Uh, but Labour has really no new plan, and certainly no effective plan, to deliver this. So as the, as the years go by, numbers remain the same. They certainly haven't dropped since Labour's have come into to power. It's still running at 24,000 uh, channel boat crossings this, this so far this year, but the same as last year. Um, it will need uh, a policy that delivers it, and the possibility of returning all those that arrive to the safe countries of the EU, perhaps France in particular, is the only possibility that will end this route. So sooner or later, Labour will have to come round to this policy and will have to accept at least some of the terms that, that France and Germany are, are now articulating. And there will no doubt be a lot of horse trading on this, but Labour will have to be able to sell this to, uh, to a UK public. And I'm fairly sure that it would be able to.
uh, an arrangement whereby the UK was taking, say, 20,000 uh, asylum seekers through an orderly process from France and Germany in return for France and Germany taking those who arrive across the Channel back is sellable to the British public once they have also understood that it is the only thing that will deliver what they want, which is control. <laughs> right. And also, we do see recent changes in the fringe government. Do you think uh, that affects the stance on migration and the proposed deal? I, I think it perhaps makes it a little bit harder to negotiate with, with France on this. I mean, obviously, as the France and Germans are suggesting that negotiations should be conducted by the, the EU, uh, it's not obvious that the EU will be the best negotiator for, 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 for this deal. It has its own interests. Um, but uh, in the end, France has itself a strong interest in not having the kind of chaos that it's witnessing uh, in, in, in on its northern shores. It has a strong interest in demonstrating that it can control uh, migra irregular migration flows. Uh, these are interests that unite much, but perhaps not all of the, the, the current government coalition. But I, I think there's enough interest there to, to, to motivate uh, an attempt to, to deliver this kind of policy, uh, and and it's a government that will perhaps struggle to deliver uh, many policies. So this is perhaps a success that it, it can achieve. So I, I think its interest and enthusiasm for this will 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 be big enough to get it over the line if the UK uh, proves willing to uh, engage seriously with this. All right, this is a uh, still unfolding story, but in the meantime, thank you so much for your input and insight and helping us understand this topic a little bit better. Really appreciate it. Thanks for being with us on TVP World. My pleasure. And thank you for watching this edition of World Talks. But for more news, update, and commentary, please stay tuned to TVP World.